All right, guys, we're back on the uh, International 175C crawler loader today. All right, guys, we're back on the crawler here. We're going to um, get some cylinders pulled off. That sounds like a fun time, don't it? <sighs> yeah. We got Kevin here helping me. Mm -hmm. We're also going to take this cab off. So if you guys not seen, there's actually a video. I'll link it down in the description. This thing of me picking this up in uh, Tennessee and hauling it back. But it's a uh, it's actually a 2003 model 175C um, track loader. They come out with this design in 1972. It's about the last year they made them. So. It's a pretty uh, tried and true machine. Um, this one does, about the only difference from the original ones. The original ones had the DT-466 International in them. This one has the uh, 5.9 12 valve Cummins in it. So These cylinders, this machine only has 300 hours on original hours. So these cylinders you can see are all rusted up, pitted from sitting in this cab, which is probably good back in the uh, 70s when they come out with it is a freaking Hard to see out of. It's a uh, big old hot box too. And it's also getting rusty. Um, we're gonna take this off if somebody wants this cab eventually. They can put it back on there, I guess. It does have air conditioning. I doubt that works anymore. Um, with all these hydraulic lines and all this stuff sitting in there, hydraulic tanks, fuel tanks, this thing's gonna get hot. I seriously doubt that that was capable of cooling this machine. So. But uh, the first thing we're going to do is get this cab all unbolted. It's kind of in sections and panels that all unbolts. The front window unbolts. Um, and then we'll lift it up off the factory roll cage here. So it does have some AC lines going to it. I'll probably put the AC machine on it just to make sure it doesn't have any uh, Freon left in it. I seriously doubt it, but you never know. But we're going to get that off because i got to do... There's no floorboards come with this machine, so I've got to make some floorboards. Um, for it and uh, all these controls and stuff super sticky from sitting here and, and all that good stuff So we're gonna get all that off. We'll probably drive it outside fire the crane up lift the cab the rest of the way off and uh, Then we'll bring it back in here And get these cylinders off. I was gonna send these off and get uh, re-chromed I got to look at this one. You guys can see that. it's got some big old gouges in it there They probably took their excavator or something and this thing wasn't running grabbed a hold of that and tore it up. So that rod's got to be replaced for sure. So we might just replace all of them, get some new rods and weld them on there. Or I'll have the hydraulic shop do it. I don't know yet. We'll get them out and see what kind of deal we got. And what are you looking at? It's a buff. Get a buff? Get a buff out. A little rusty. Got some crusties in there. I know a guy can fix that. That's right. Anyway, we're going to get busy with what, 9 16ths? Sure. And three quarters? Sure. We're going to get this dude unbolted, then we'll drive her straight out and uh, set the cab off. That sound like a plan? Let's do it. All right, got the AC lines hooked up. There's actually nothing in this thing. It's plumb out like I figured it was, so I'm going to disconnect that. We just saved all the butterflies in the universe, didn't we? That's right. That's right. Yeah, she's empty for sure. Not a big surprise there. All right, Kevin's getting stuff unbolted over there. I am going to um, do some cutting here. We got coolant lines on this side. I'm going to cut those off right now. They go down to the engine, which we can't get to with the arms down. So I'm just going to cut them and loop them together for now. And we'll try to tidy those up later. And then I'm going to cut those AC lines over there too. All right, we got a vice grip party going on up here. I already got wet. I don't know what I was thinking. Sticky antifreeze. <laughs> Woo! She's a leaker, boys. <laughs> well, that pair is not doing its job. Hey, you're <laughs> leaking. Hopefully, we don't have to work down there. We might need a pig mat. Huh, I think so. I don't know who put those vice grips on there, but... I 
in complete awe. I can't even function right now. What's that? I'm just staring at it, just running down the you side just want of the it to run and make it all slick and Yeah. What would a fella do for like a five sixteenth nut driver? Well probably a lot. Or a screwdriver or do you think a guy like me would be prepared and have I, all this stuff I could up here? I probably come up with something. Let's see here. Might as well just done take ease off because it's done drained out. That's right. See, we're just doing this temporary till we get uh, get her all up in here later on, and we'll probably shut her off at the block. That would have been the smart thing to do, you know. No. You know. Better that Track way. loader is a little harder to work on when the arms are on the ground. Turn the key on and then cut the rest of them cables. I'm going to cut them right those now. Those are hoses, but by the way. They're color-coded. Those, that big red one, it'll do some welding on them. <laughs> Especially once you touch it back I'm getting to ready to cut them spots. if I find my cutters. What do I do with them? I don't know. Probably dropped them in the panic when I got all wet. Here I come with another pair. How did I just lose a pair of cutters? The people in the cameras probably seen, seen where I set them. Here, these are already pre-torched. People are probably just cringing their teeth right now. Alright. Hey, they make houses. Those aren't hoses? Uh-uh. They got that little shiny they gold looking stuff in there? They braiding on the inside. That's for insulation. <laughs> we'll put some safety precautions on there, won't we? Sure. All right, I'm going to cut those AC lines. If I ever find my cutters that I lost. I don't know. I didn't. Can I put them up there? I can't believe I lost those. All right, I want to get those AC lines cut. If somebody does hook this back up, it's going to need new AC lines anyway. Those things are getting cracked, so not a big deal to cut them. Found my cutters. They're way down here. Stuck between the arm and the... Oh, they're wedged in there good. Guess I got panicked when I cut the lines and dropped them. All right, I'm gonna put some scotch locks on here so everybody can bash me in the comments right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is just temporary, people. I know this is a big no-no, but it will be just fine, won't it? Mm -mm. Until we get everything off here, then we'll terminate the wires. All right, Kevin's been unbolting all kinds of. You got bolts out everywhere up there. 762 bolts. 762 lighter. bolts. There you oh, go. Oh, we're missing the door here, ain't we? There you go. What you need? Right here. All right. Right here. There's two of them. Oh, I got two bolts. right here. Which one you on the front one? This one. You gotta hurry and get over here before he gets on there. There we go. Ready? Yep. Perfect. Perfect. I'm going to take out this super sweet custom fan. Oh yeah, we might need that. Well, How's that air conditioner? Uh, that looks like a drop ceiling they put in there. Yeah. That metal around it's not factory if I remember right. Pick three. Hmm. Hmm. We're going to have to figure we'll that situation out. We'll find out this we'll we start find jerking out. on it, won't we? I think there's some eyelet bolts that screw in through the top. You like that fan, don't you? Whoever invented the sheet metal screw that's What you got Phillips going on in. here? Circuit Breaker City? That's right. These bars are attached, ain't they? One of these just grounds here. We can cut ground wires all day long, can't we? Cut them for days. Cut them for days. What else? Is that it? Do you need some more scotch locks? I got some. People really love those. Uh, no. No? I've just been laying them on bare metal. Yeah, that's how you do it. All right, we'll probably uh, sneak up top here and see what's going on with the air conditioner. All right, up top here is actually, <laughs> so if you see this perforated grill, that's so when you got the loader bucket all the way up in the air, you can see like dumping in a truck or something. I actually had a piece of glass in here and it's just laying up here dangling. Hard to tell how long it's been laying out there. 
Let me get that out of there before we break it. Oh, it's lovely. Anyway, so these hooks, I think, go down through and there's like a nut on underneath of them. I gotta find out where they go to, but. We got a big old chunk of air conditioner up here, bub. Should we keep this, it? This rain cap's not looking real good. You see that rain cap? It's perforated. Perforated. For we'll performance. Have to do something. You think that air conditioner is attached? It's gonna pull out of that hole or what? You just gonna start yanking? Mm. So these have a nut on these four eyelets here. Mm. Not sure about that. This is kind of made different than the other ones I took off. Oh yeah, it goes down through, I can feel it. And it goes to the depths. You didn't see no big nut in there? Oh, I see more 916 bolts on here and some friends. <laughs> I need an impact. Hmm. Fresh out. You got another. 916th, eh? Yeah. This holds the front of the cab in here. Windshield wiper arm is right in the way, of course. All right, I'm gonna get those out. Then we'll try to find those bolts there, or nuts, and get that loose. All right, these bolts that go up under here actually are got nuts on them, unfortunately. You're right up in here, Kevin. You need to slide your wrench up in there. This is a good time. Who done this? You got that? Ray. You ready? Hammer time. Bring thunder. You get it? You bet it, Bobby. I got one more over here. Oh yeah, right there in the wash nest. You ready? Yep. Got it. Oh yeah, right here? Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You want a bolt? No. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate <laughs> you. You on it? Keep going. There you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now we got one in the center up here. Now you're going to have to ratchet wrench, bud. Too bad you took my impact from me. My 3 8 drive impact. I don't know. You know, if I had a... We can... <laughs> If I had a short socket and a U-joint, or you can ratchet wrench it off, that's your choice. Because I can't get, uh, I need a regular wrench. What'd you do with it? Well, I got a windshield wiper. What'd you do with it? This is a good place for a windshield wiper shaft. I got a bolt right up in there. You guys can see that. Can't get any impact on it. Where's the old 960? You what? I think you done. You ate it. 916? Yeah, you ate it. Kevin's decided to take the windshield wiper motor out of my way. You know it's still in my way, right? Hey. The whole thing has to come out. Hey. Shaft and all. Hey. All this because you lost my 9 sixteenths. I'm not the one that lost a 9 sixteenths. You yeah, had you it did. last. You lost it. Guaranteed it's in your pocket. It you probably put it in your car already. <laughs> Maybe. Just because the Napa tool sale is going on this month don't mean you can take tools home. Ha, I'll be tipped. I know we got more 916 wrenches. No, that's the only one. Are you ready? You're doing a fine job, you know that, right? Oh, hang on. <laughs> Are you trying to rip my pants? Come on, do something. Quit turning. <laughs> I'm gonna drop this wrench down your teeth. All right. Some people's children. <laughs> you know, if you'd done this to begin with, we wouldn't be doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I step outside for one minute. Nothing gets done. Yep. Worthless helpers. Production goes down to half, don't it? That's right. 
It's a good thing this glass is out of our way. We can't do this. I won't go drop stuff on you. We definitely couldn't hold this conversation. And if they can still hear us because we got mics on. There you go. Now you, what? You can't go no farther. There's a shaft here, bud. Now what? You see where these big hooks come down at? Big meat hooks? Big meat hooks. Yep. I can see them. Do you see, is there a nut one's, on them? One's got a wasp nest in it. A wasp nest? Did they put that in there where you can't get to them? No, I can get to them. I can twist them. Don't those go through the cage? Yeah. They go through the chicken wire. So if you can hold the nut, I can get a pry bar and twist this, twist these oh, eyelets really? loose. How's that sound? Okay. I might give you this piece of glass too before I break it. That sound like a plane? Those are probably 5 8 <laughs> bolts. 15 sixteenths inch. You want this? Uh, uh -uh. It's already got a crack in it, too. Oh, good. It's better that way. All right. I'm sure it's safety glass, too. We're going to get some tools and get those dudes out. All right, I'm tired of this flapper cutting me in the shirt 10,000 times. The thing is, if you guys can see that, it is jagged. I'm going to cut her off here. Kevin may find me a new one. That size. You missed it. Did you find it? Right. Yeah. Now should I ask everybody which way this is supposed to be put on? Because <laughs> me and you have differences of opinion on this subject. <laughs> Do it the right way. The right way? So you guys tell me. Oh crap, here we go. So the front of the machine is pointing back this way. See, there's the bucket. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So I like to put them where they're blowing smoke away from the operator. Uh -huh. Kevin thinks they need to go on Get it this up way. over the cab. So it blows smoke back in your face no, when the wind's no, blowing? Look, see, did you see how you pointed? You pointed the first time oh. you pointed up at, a, up at a 45 forward. You've never been working when the wind's blowing. Hey. I know what's happening. Hey, All that power is going to come up out we'll of there. We'll just have a vote. This people is put, go shoo -hoosh. People put it in the comments I down below. I don't care what them people say. They call these things motors. We'll see who wins. <laughs> it's the engine or a motor. <laughs> so you guys comment below which way the flapper is supposed to go it on. It goes that way. Maybe we should put it on sideways and just make everybody. Now, so then that's they're really equal. get mad. Then you're you guys comment the whether it's supposed to go forward or backwards. I'm going to put backwards. it on sideways. Because we like to party. It goes backwards, just like your hat. See, it's halfway in between. We're both right now. Okay, cool. Do that. <laughs> right. Tighten it up. Yeah, I need a half inch wrench. Proof. Kevin got a crescent wrench out, and I said, people's not going to like oh, that. Oh, man. I said, it's 15 sixteenths. He doesn't believe me. It says USA. It's got to be American, right? I'm spinning it, Bubby. I don't mean nothing. You just keep spinning because this wrench is too small. Is it? Let me get out my one size fits all master kit. Did you get a me metric crescent wrench or American crescent wrench? This is America. You want me to keep spinning it? I felt something grab. Go ahead, hit it. You got it. Got your fingers out of the way? Yep. Hit it with your purse. This is an American crescent wrench here. American. One time I had a boy working for me. I told him I need a me metric crescent wrench. He's probably still looking for it to this day. <laughs> I'll leave the names out. His name was Kevin, wasn't it? Kevin, no. <laughs> These people are really going to think you're special. It's all right. They know they use crescent wrenches just like me. They just won't admit to it. Why am I up here doing this? You're doing a good job. We need job. to like weld a nut to this or something. We can put an impact on it. Keep up the good work. Did you put any spray on it? No. No, it's a lock nut. It's okay, it'll be tied all the way to the end. Oh, she's getting easy now. See, you're out. These go through the road cage, right? Oh yeah. You know, people's gonna think that these are like lifting eyes and I guess if you unbolted the road cage down here, it would pick the whole thing up, wouldn't it? You know, I could put that. Uh, they come off yet? Yep. 
Just got a little rubber ring here. You need some pry bar assistance? There you go. You ready for another one? Man, it's a good thing got this new flapper on here sideways. I didn't get cut. That's right. Now I'm gonna get stabbed with the... You ready? Yep. I see your arm moving. Do it. All right, got those four eyelet bolts uh, taken off up there. We think we got all the bolts loose in the cab. So, about ready. We need to take the data plate out here too. Pop Rivet City. That's the data plate, one of the data plates. That's actually the military data plate for this machine. It's a U.S. Air Force machine. I'll definitely keep that and put that back on somewhere. But yeah, we're going to get this thing uh, fired up, drive it outside. We got our rain cap sitting in the middle, pointing out the side so it's uh, neutrally located. Is that right? That's right. Cap neutral. It's not frontwards or backwards. It's half right. Now, when I raise the arms up, it's going to blow smoke over my arms. You know that, right? It'll be all right. You'll, you'll survive. All right, we're going to get this dude fired up and pulled outside and hopefully set the cab off. What are you doing to my windshield washer tank? Well, I was trying to get that off. He's drilling out the rivets for the uh, data plate tag. You can do it. I think you didn't drill that one enough. Got it. So the machine has a serial number itself. But this is actually the U.S. Uh, Air Force tag. You guys can see that there. 34,645 pounds. August of 2003 was the delivery date. This is pretty new for us, even though it doesn't look like it. Yeah. That thing's heavy. You feel that? Is it out of lead or something? Yeah, we can probably get some scrap out of this. <laughs> you think we could still call this guy Patrick? I think so. At the Air Force Base? Yeah, I know him. Does that say Florida? FL? Something like that. Yeah. All right. We're gonna fire this bad boy up and pull her outside. All right, I'm gonna spray some of these. These control levers have been sitting for days and days and days. They're all super sticky. I wanted to get the cap off so we get these things a little better, but it's starting to be a pain just to drive because everything is stuck. It's a little sticky, bub. We'll yeah, get the right. cab off and worry about that. You ready to roll out? I do believe so. Alright, after talking to Kevin, we have a little bit of change of plans. We was going to take the old crane and pick that dude up, but there's no lifting eyes on top. And the way this thing's made, I think we're going to pick it up, tandem, pick it up with two forklifts up under here. So the center section of the window, front and rear, is actually um, bolted in. It's unbolted, so it should stay there in theory. Hopefully it doesn't fall down. We'll get it up here a little bit, but 
we're both gonna have to go up real easy with the forklifts, trying not to tear the sides up. We're basically gonna pick that dude straight up off there. We're gonna have, like I say, gonna have to watch the uh, front and rear windows. We'll probably get this, get it up a little bit, then maybe try to get those up. Yeah. Out. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Maybe we'll get a third forklift and get those out. Now we're talking. We got more forklifts. Okay. Are you ready? Let's do it. All right, we're gonna set you guys up here. Probably I set them up on this side where the sun's in the back, huh? Mm, yeah. Get them far away so I don't crash this camera again. <laughs> then dropped it once this morning. All right, we're gonna set you guys up here. Come on, baby. You ready? Kevin, let's take a look. See what we got going on with the air conditioner. Uh, you got some wires down in there or what? Oh, uh, I'm just checking to see what I got going on here. I think the silicone's gonna hold the back window in. A little yeah. bit. There's some wires going down to that control panel, I think, isn't there? Hey. Gotta pay attention in tandem lift. Pay attention to what the other person's doing. You can cut that wire there, Kevin, or hold up. What about that wire? Ready? You on your forks all right? You look all right, am I all right? I think we're good. Hang on. Let me check. Pretty so I even. keep going up? I guess I can lift way up above it. Okay. You know what we could do? Let's come in the back with another forklift. Grab it right now. That with that long Scott's. fork one? Yeah. That okay. would be smart, wouldn't Let me it? Let go get it real quick. All right, guys. Kevin went to uh, get a third forklift. We've got it lifted up off there quite a ways. We could keep going on up. Well, I think what he's gonna do, we've got a forklift with long forks. We're gonna come in the back of it and pick that cab the rest of the way up. It'd be a little safer and stuff. And uh, get her plumb off there. But yeah, it's uh, coming off pretty good. So he'll be back with that green one. Like I say, we're gonna stab in the back there. It's got long forks, should overhang that. We'll pick that the rest of the way up, then back the cab off there and set it down safer than trying to get in the machine and drive it forward sitting here at the back of this you guys see that tag that's supposedly what the army paid for this thing i sure hope they didn't pay it much but it says two hundred and fifty six thousand dollars that would have been in 2003 a lot of money all right we got the third forklift we got more forklifts too you want to spread your forks out there up you'll be fine it needs to rock back anyway Kevin oh hey all right going up I seen a cable over here hang on hang on hang on hey, look at the other side look out yeah he 
tilt her back a little bit maybe. All right, now go on up. Is that all you got? This is the end of our voyage. Our end of our voyage, huh? Yep. We're gonna have to regroup. Well, we need another forklift. You know, I got that big telehandler over here. I can really get it. <laughs> About like out. You can drive right. All forward. right, Kevin ran out of lift, but guess what? I got an idea. We got one more big old telehandler over here. I can come up the front and pick it up. It goes uh, 55 foot. Oh yeah, we got do it. We got that'll do it. One more forklift, I think, will get the job done. That's right. All right, it's starting to look like a forklift party out here. Kevin's got the guy I'll tell here. They're actually um, I got a customer buying that. It's the one I bought down in Florida. If you guys didn't pay attention, he's gonna get her run up in there. That will definitely get the job done. A bit, Kevin. Yeah, he's got her. How many forklifts does it take to lift a cab off? You straighten your wheels up. Just use that to begin with. That would have been the smart thing. Got her. I'm back, back here. Yeah. I don't know, back here behind them trucks, uh, 850J frames. Back here by your sand blaster. Why didn't we just do this to begin with? It's better with all of with those four forklifts. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna get some of these forklifts moved out of the way here. We definitely don't need them all. So we got the front and rear glass left yet. We'll, uh, these are fun to get out of here. I think about the only thing that's holding those is silicone right now. So we're gonna get up and see if we can get those pried loose. See if we can get those pried loose and set down the forklifts. Right here, up here in the cab, and I think the only thing that's holding those is some silicone. It could be wrong. Could be some mystery bolts in there, but definitely don't see anything. We're gonna try to rock this dude down here and get her unstuck, huh? Might move your super sweet fan over there. Oh, she, she's a common damn bub. Oh. oh. Got it. I thought yeah, we could drive the big green forklift in sideways here. Okay. All right. You want me to do it or you want to do it? Let's see what she does. Probably have to narrow the forks up. You'll come in here and stab it sideways. All 
right, he's gonna try to come here and stab this dude. Oh yeah. Yo, easy, I got a fuel cap over here. Let's come in about another. Yeah, well, that's it. Hang on. I don't want to tear it off. All right, I think that's you. Going up. Now back up. Straight back. You got her. All right. Time for the front one. All right, I think what I'm gonna do here, this one's kind of glued up the same way at the top. I think we may drive the forklift in here, try to hinge this dude up this way, lay it on a fork, and maybe try to wiggle her out that way. So we don't want it dropping down and hitting the old dash here and tearing it up. So we can't really go out the front because we got this uh, roll cage here. So we'll try the forks in here first and see if that works. All right, I think we're going to try to hinge it out first, then bring the forklift in because I don't think we can get it up over the. I hear it popping and cracking. This thing's probably heavy too. It looks like it could be. Is that piece of metal in your way? You need yep. to bend it. Watch um, it don't fall. We'll leave it right there where it can't fall. Are right, you a man? Oh. 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 Just broke him off, didn't you? That's right. All right. I can do that all the way up three quarter inch bolts. It may fall down, so. You think you got all the bolts out of there, Bobby? Were you hoping that it would fall down? Uh, Oh, it looks like this one bolt and the windshield wiper's holding us. Look at it. <laughs> the one that... The one that you failed to take out. See, I'll take out my side. You were supposed to take out this motor here. This one right here has got us. Yep, sure does. I might be able to pry that out. I don't know. Right now, I wish I had a question. This thing looks really heavy. Why is it still stuck? Oh, it's up over top that lip, ain't it? Yeah, we got to come with the That's good stuff. Is it still holding it? Oh. Uh oh. I'm about to go straight down that hole and. Down this hole? Yeah, watch that safety lever there. Are you got any other ideas? I don't want to knock you off. How about that? You know this window's broke already, right? Yeah, we can do whatever we want to do. Can you slide it out your way a little more once you get down? Yeah. Ready? Yep. All right. When you come out over there. Yeah. All right. We're cleaning some of this crap. They got all this old insulation and stuff in here. I had a razor blade laying up for Kevin. They've got all these panels insulated. They're trying to make that air conditioner work, I'd say. Mm -hmm. All this stuff does is hold in uh, moisture and water and what have you. Isn't that right? That's right. Squirrel nuts. We're going to get all that off there and uh, take it back and let Randy. Papa Randy will do it. Give her a quick wash job before we pull her back in the shop here. I'm going to pull this panel off here too. Yeah, they had all that stuff stuck on there. You guys can see. I guarantee that air conditioner was not uh, not keeping up with that. You had all these holes cut out in the cab for these lines. These old machines just wasn't designed for a cab. It's back when they had real men. Didn't need cabs. That's right. That's right. We're Not gonna get me. all cleaned up. That's because you pee when you sit, right? That's right. Now what you tell me? You sit when I pee. You sit when you pee. That's right. All right. We'll uh, get this back here and go see Randy. All right, back up on the machine. You guys can see. You can see way much better off that thing with no cab on there. You got full visibility. You can see the outside of the tracks. So much better. 
So these have pedal steering. The center one is a brake, and I believe it's hooked to the de accelerator pedal. It's currently stuck, froze up. It moves a little bit, but not much. You got steering left and right. This is low and high range on your transmission. And the shifter's got transmissions basically two speed. So if you're in low, you're in first and third. If you're in high, you'll be in second and fourth. Most of the time, I always worked in high range in second and fourth. So Put my armrest back down there. I'm going to fire this up and uh, take her back to Randy. Kind of cleaned all this crap up so it's not an absolute disaster working on it. And then we'll get in there and tackle those cylinders. Got her backed in the shop there. Got that cleaned off a little bit. A little better. Got some of the crud and crap out of it. We'll get all that sticky glue crap off here and get her all cleaned up. It's good enough to work on it for now. So our main goal for the rest of the, this video here is getting these chrome cylinders out. I think we're going to leave the barrel on the machine here. We'll pull these four bolts out. This cylinder should come out. Hopefully these 300 hour pins come out. That's my only fear his stuff gets uh tight when it's uh brand new and never been used low hours we fight this crap all the time so same thing this one will knock his pin out of these four and one cylinders we'll take this row of bolts out and there's three uh round pieces in there they'll pop out retainer rings pretty easy to come apart if everything's not rusted up and and uh seized but we're always fighting low hour stuff and when it doesn't get used very much you know this machine's almost 20 years old those pins get rusted up in these tight bores you can see everything's tight because it has no time on it but 
it uh, could be a good day, could be a bad day here real quick. We're getting ready to find out. You know it's party time when we got a roll that's bigger around than you, right? <laughs> yep. We got the big roll of pig mats out because we're about to have a party. All right, I got the uh, return to dig rod off the top of the cylinder. You guys don't know what that means. It's actually a little valve in here. This rod has a divot in it, so when you dump that bucket, there's actually a detent in that lever. When you flip it back up, it will stick there. It will roll back the bucket, which to the return to dig position. And there's actually a little valve in there, and it'll click off. So the other side has a uh, bucket rod indicator over here. And there's usually supposed to be marks on top of the cylinder painted up here. It will tell you where your return to dig is. It also have a couple for scrape and clamshell and stuff like that when you're using the foreman bucket. But um, got these bolts out. I got to take this uh, bucket indicator rod off there yet. Kevin's got this super sweet, uh, what do you call this? Funnel? My, yeah. You think you're going to catch all the oil with this? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to work. Well, I guess the first thing you need to do is see if that pin will knock out, huh? Oh, 300 hours. 300 hours in rust, yeah. It's coming out. All right, we'll set you guys up here and we'll see if we're going to have a party or not. Hey, don't move, bub. Not at all. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Oh, it moved a little. You just see I'm not going to say nothing because we'll jinx ourselves. I told you. I can karate chop aught gauge. Aught gauge wire. And break three quarter bolts. All right. With my bare hands. Now we got some more bolts to break through right here. <laughs> hmm. That's a what, inch and eighth party? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Who does this? What to are me? you doing? Your little dingleberry stopper. It stopped me. How's that going for you, girlfriend? That ain't working. You gonna get out the really big one. Hmm. Hmm. Let's try a different one. Let's just say that one was stuck. Mm hmm. Shoot, Ned. Denied. Hmm. Time for the big gun. I'll take these hoses off back here. It's kind of looking like a party here. You ready for this? Uh -uh. You didn't jack her in, you went to the real big one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be the jammer upper? Yeah. I'm going to leave that top one in some for you. Nice people do. How's this going for you? Same. You need one without the handle? You better believe it, Bubby. Don't we have one without a handle? We sure do. You get that top one? Sure can. That stuck it. Stuck it, mm -hmm. Stucky? Mm-hmm. Or you want to manhandle it with the breaker bar? Mm-hmm. Socket in a different coal. And you bend the handle up the other way, huh? Yeah. That'll make it better. Alright. Yeah, you did that. <laughs> but. Oh. 
Oh yeah. Ready for some air power? Nope. What? Didn't think I come floating out like you think. It's going to. You know it's all rusty. It's coming out. Mm -mm. Be ready. You've done this to me. Right. Be on call. You're gonna be, be on call. See? I caught something already. Your funnel's work happening working already. Look at all that oil running out. <laughs> I'm gonna be here though when it comes. Are you? Yeah, it's not coming. I guess we're gonna have to pick the cylinder up. Give her. You got a ledge there? Oh yeah, she coming. She coming, boys! Oh, it hit that thing, didn't it? What happened? go. Oh, can That's a plus. It's coming out. Oh, yeah. Tiny chisel. She's ready to party. Tiny Why chisel. Why would I use the chisel when I got all these flat screwdrivers. Blade screwdrivers? They work as chisels. That's right. They're sharper, too. Yeah. Here comes the big douche. It's about time for a pry bar. Oh boy. Oh boy. You want a big party or a little party? I'm here to party. Ah! Just out of the side of my head. That's it. <laughs> That's the Oh man. You let off all the lines or something. Well, I don't know. Well, there's not much volume in there. Mm. Mm hmm. Now we gotta pick the cylinder up and I was so anticlimactic. Well it's still gonna leak out, I can tell you. But that, we get the cylinder I, up. I wanted a big douche. Like <laughs> just a <laughs> <You're right. laughs> no. We put a chain around here and tie it up to that there cage and mm -hmm. sound like a plan? Mm-hmm. Alright, we're gonna regroup. You pick that up there, then we'll put the chainer on it. Okay. I don't want you pulling that ram out when we go up. We'll go down a little bit. I think that looks good. You uh, just need to stay hooked up, come down, and I'll slide you. I might uh, slide this up, Kevin, and get you on the other side of this. That sound like a plane? Okay. Come on down some more. Okay. Back up and go that way. Maybe pick it up a little bit. Okay. Hang on. You got it. All right, we got that one off sitting over in the bench. Whoever put the uh, copper NICs on there, definitely want to thank him. That thing come apart. Really nice. Seals inside there where the oil was. It's perfect, but out here, it's pitted up something awful. But anyway, we'll get the rest of them out and we'll get a game plan on what we're going to do with them all. Where are we going? Another side there, Mr. Kevin? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Changing gears. We're going to the other side now.
right, we got the other side off. Getting ready to tackle the uh, form on bucket cylinders here. You want to do the nasty one first or what? Oh yeah. It's got some massive scars in there. I like for you to just come all back over here. We got again. the other bucket curl cylinder here off. Looking fine. Hopefully that's got anti-seize on it like the, these. Oh yeah. Grease or whatever it is. I hate to say this, but things been going too smooth. Hey, you just dropped your nut. Nut? Just a nut. These nuts? Just a nut. Need to bust those lines loose. Where's my poopy? Where's my poopy pan? Loose. We want to see if that pin's gonna come out, don't we? Mm-hmm. Are you feeling lucky? Punk. Which side are you hitting from? This side. The left hand. The other side. There any? Oh my. Lube. Let me get you a little bit of lubrication on there. Hmm. Hmm. That'll That's, do that it. Sounded solid though. There at first. Got it. Just that easy. And that pin's just like not wore out, huh? 300 hours. Mm-hmm. Put the impact on that other one. It's not happy. I need a zip tie. Zip. I'll tie that up. All right. So we're gonna clean this. Uh, crevice out here there's a should be three pieces of ring in here probably o-ring up here up top to keep the dirt out yep I'm just shoving the o-ring down in deeper I had something going on. <laughs> My purse wasn't quite strong enough at that angle. So there's those little round pieces. There's three of them in there that lock that in. So now this thing ought to be ready to pull up out of there with the forklift. Still got the grease on there from the factory. It's probably the only thing saving us is uh, low hours right now. Usually we're dealing with low hours and old, old. <laughs> like that. Good. 
All right, got that little four and one cylinder out there. I say little, it's uh, pretty beefy, but you guys can see that rod is absolutely destroyed. I think they got an excavator tooth in there, probably trying to pull that thing around when it wasn't running or something before I got a hold of it. That's been done for a little while, but all this stuff looks really nice inside of here. Still got all the assembly lube on when it was put together new. Kevin's over here gonna unbolt the other side. We shouldn't, we always have to unhook the lines off cylinder so it doesn't create suction vacuum so we can pull these things out. So being these two are linked together, it should be teed right there. In theory, we should be able to leave this side unhooked and uh, pull that side out. That's how it's supposed to work anyway. Sounds like a good idea so we don't have a big oil mess over here. Um, we're going to do the same thing. You just watched us take that, that one apart over there. It's going to be the same procedure. How's this one look? Rusty? Mm -hmm. You're ready to have a party here, ain't you? Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to get after this when you guys can watch on time lapse. All right, we got the fourth uh, rod out there. Got everything covered up, and uh, I want to show you guys this linkage that uh, Drott actually started making this loader for International back in the, uh, I think maybe the 50s. Somebody may correct me if I'm wrong, but 50s or 60s. International used to just build the tractors, and they'd send them to the Drott factory, and they would put the bucket and the loader on them. Anyway, International ended up acquiring Drott, but all this stuff is super heavy duty. This if you notice this is a pretty short cylinder it's actually curling that bucket back here and the reason it's short and strong like that they've got this big long arm here that's going across down through here these loaders had an exceptional breakout force but a very very well built design on the loader frame everything's these pins are huge um, that's probably like a three and a half inch pin and you got big surface area to wear on four on bucket cylinders are heavy but these are very solid built machine probably one of the better track loaders of the time far superior to what caterpillar had back in the day a cat machine would have been a 955 would have been the equivalent to this uh, system but anyway it's a well thought out engineered uh, front loader for sure international had it a lot a uh, lot simpler like taking these cylinders and stuff you don't need any special tools you know you got four bolts that pops out this has the three three rings don't need any spanner tools or anything like that. They always, they made these tractors didn't have, didn't have to have all the special pullers and stuff like a cat and all that stuff. He's more designed for the farmer type person to work on, I guess you could say, but a lot nicer to work on than some of the other stuff anyway. So that being said, I think Kevin and I are gonna take a, take a nut off one of each of these cylinders. I'm not sure, I may order some uh, chrome rod stock up and actually uh, make a, replacement for that one. I may do all of them. Cylinders are getting pretty expensive right now to re-chrome. Um, and if this stuff gets pitted too deep, then they can't re-chrome it. This one here bothers me a little bit. It's got some pretty, pretty nasty uh, nicks in it. It's just from sitting out and not using it. But you guys can see that's all the original assembly lube on this thing. It actually come apart a lot easier than I was thinking, didn't you? Mm -hmm. I think the only thing that saved us is it's only like 19 years old and not 40 years old like we're usually working on because there's no wear or nothing. Like I say, it's a 300 hour machine, so there shouldn't be, but uh, anyway, I think we'll get the impact set up here and buzz a couple nuts off and I'll see. I think I can make these on the lathe. Um, might make a cool video for you guys to watch. Um, then that, that'd be in a def definitely a, another video in itself so we can cut the ends off turn those back down weld them back on and all that good stuff so we're going to grab an impact and a couple sockets and buzz a couple of those nuts off <laughs> didn't even phase it bob
O-ring on there, it wasn't happy. Mm-hmm. Seals aren't happy in there. I'll go over here with it. Yeah, it's all gonna get. Put some open and shut on it, Bob. Hold up. That looks really hot. I'm gonna open it first. Good idea. Then I'm going to shut it. <laughs> I'm going to guess that... Uh, She's still good. Yeah. Mmm. Should we show the people what you've done? On a scale of one to ten, this I This happens it a from 10. sometimes. You got good threads and bad threads. I think you pretty much turned them all off there, bub. Told you. You saw what I could do with just my bare hands. Imagine if I had a machine in it. All right. We don't need a lathe when we got the impact over there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're going to get that stuff off there. Mm -hmm. I've seen those. I don't know why they'll come off like so far and then they just decide to strip out. They always put lock nuts on these. For some reason that one had a nylon lock nut and this was a stamp steel one. Now stamp steel ones are real good at stripping mm -hmm. threads out. Luckily if that shaft is good we could still reuse that because those threads wasn't even being used. So no. But we're not mm -hmm. reusing that shaft. So. All right, we're going to get the rest of that stuff off there, then do the big ones. All right, you ready for the big dog? Two and three quarter. Let's see if we can have a party. Hey, you know what? That socket is still hot. That socket's still even hot. After I our, even after our commercial break. After somebody destroyed my nut. Oh, that's so hot. Hey. Don't touch that nut. I told you that socket's hot. Not very tight, was it? I think they just use big nuts so they don't have to tighten them. These nuts? Mm-hmm. I just wanted to say that. They probably put it on with the crescent wrench. Probably. You don't need no special tools. That's right. Ah! Got it. Is this too high for you, bub? Alright, that's why I gotta get me tippy toes. I mean, I feel like we could have got that off with a pair of ice grips or something. <laughs> Crescent wrench, I'm telling you. They're handy. Oh, about took the whole table with me. Did you see that? <laughs> These people seen this table, they'd know you're full of it. <laughs> about two and a half inches thick. You guys see this table here? I about took it. Didn't you see it? Oh. Look, it's not even parallel to the shop anymore. Two and a half inches. How big is it? Six foot square? <laughs> Solid two and a half inch thick metal. It come out of the GE. I done, I done jerked it We've four got two inches. They come out of the GE refrigerator factory here locally. <laughs> They're old die plates is what they are from the refrigerator. So. Yep. All right. Got them all apart. Just got to get a game plan on what we're going to do here. All right, guys. Got these all off here. I probably will fix this one myself. That's still hot yet, Kevin. Especially somebody stripped all the threads out, right? Yeah. All this up here don't have anything to do with it. Probably will I do both of these. I know that one won't chrome, this other one. These probably will re-chrome. I may, um, 
it's getting expensive. I got a company that does it. It's getting expensive to have it done. I may price out some new rod and uh, see how much that is. I do have a mill. I've done it in the past. We can cut some threads and stuff and weld some new ends on. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to do some pricing both ways, but if you guys want to see that kind of stuff, let me know in the comments below. If I do do that stuff, you guys might want to consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the, on the video on that, on the, some lathe work. So brush up on some of my rusty skills I've not done for a while. Anyway, that's going to be a wrap on that. Like I said, we got the cab and the cylinders off today. Um, we got plenty more to do to this tractor. We're going to do a full service on it. Uh, get it cleaned up. Kevin's probably going to work some magic up in that area there where that yellow stuff is. Isn't that right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've got to make a couple panels. These panels was uh, um, different because it had that cab on there. So I'm going to make a couple enclosures for it. I do need to find an engine screen or make something that's missing this uh, left hand engine screen over here. I'll probably end up making something for that because I probably can't find anything that's uh good or it'd be really expensive if i did find it so but anyway guys definitely give me thumbs up if you like what you saw today and uh like i say if you're not done so consider subscribing so there'll be more cool videos shop videos coming out in this and i still got it. i may take it out and run it a little bit too so we'll see you guys next time